Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Prestel field strength meter type MC16. This one was announced in Wireless World 1968. For the first time we found a nice little article in this uh, my, a magazine and it sh tells a little bit about what it can do and there's a little picture and all that kind of stuff. Two years uh, later, also in Wireless World 1970, there is a, um, a little bit bigger and better article that explains a little bit more and a little bit better picture and all that kind of stuff. And of course, they try to advertise this instrument in a magazine that has something to do with television, TV stations, and broadcast, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Because this unit is, um, is what you will install TV antennas, or you will would um, use this to debug, repair, and improve TV installation. So, what can this do? Yes, it's of course a field strength meter, so it can receive the entire um, VHF, FM band, the low um, VHF, and also the entire UHF TV bands. It's using two different inputs for the different bands. So you select like this, the different bands, and then you dial the frequency in here. I think it's really fun with the dials, see? And then there's a fine, and then there's, look at that. It's all in one knob. So it's made with a little gearbox. So there's this range in super fine, and then look at that. Whoa. I kind of like that interface. You don't see that a lot. It's uh, powered by seven 1.5 volt uh, batteries and it's quite heavy. So I'm a little bit afraid we'll find batteries uh, in this unit. Of course it can receive and demodulate AM and FM. There's a speaker in this one. So you can clickety click and then volume. So there's, I think this is just a little, the little amplifier. And here you can go into battery mode and then I think the idea is you push this button and then you have a battery tester and then it goes to the little mark here. Funny enough this is red. It should maybe be green, right? I think that is the idea. But I don't, I don't see any kind of indications on the meter so this is a good sign. Maybe there's no uh, batteries inside. What else can we say about this? this is of course a complete transistor unit. We've got 16 transistors and uh, 10 diodes or something like that. And here it explains all the different channels and frequencies. That is the funny things about <laughs> TV bands. They got channels and that will be the frequency. You see all the Band one and okay, band two, that will be the FM band. We've got some more VHF channels here and yeah, that's all the UHF stuff. So there's a little funny calculator here for microvolts and millivolts and decibels. Maybe this is uh, so you could uh, put some attenuators and uh, amplify the or attenuate the different uh, TV station signals. So the idea is you want to make them all more or less the same level, right? Oh, look at that. You see the aluminium scratches. That's of course the that knob and the two connectors here, they damage this aluminium quite a lot. We even got, oh, what is that? A satellite connector. And then we can go and check the satellite signals. Okay, BNC connector and the other one. So that's quite convenient. 
let's uh, try and take it out the leather nice leather casing so it's definitely something you have around you when you crawl around the <laughs> the roof and poke around with your antennas right oh did i mention we find uh, we also found all the manuals schematics and all that kind of stuff online the the best quality schematics i could find that was on um, radio museum the original uh, schematic i found on another page uh, had some damaged uh, pixels in it but the radio museum that was uh, fixed in a nice and uh, fine quality i will show you the schematic uh, in a little later moment first i want to see if i can open it that was quite easy just to take it out of the leather case um, the fun thing is it's not that heavy anymore i think it's the <laughs> reason for the super heavy duty that was a really thick leather case so i think that we uh well somebody took out the batteries that's probably the loudspeaker in there this looks like the battery compartment right inside this fantastic unit i'm a little bit impressed i didn't expect it to be that nicely made i mean let's start with the front this is a solid piece of casted aluminium and look how nice and shiny it is so this is top quality casting aluminium normally it's not this shiny and nice but what the heck really really nice so that's of course the IF path and then we got a little audio amplifier and that will be the FM detector coils and one little transistor to do FM detection. AM detection is uh, made just by a single diode somewhere down here and then there's this audio amplifier. I don't know exactly where that is but that is the, the main idea of the yeah, IFN detector and uh, loudspeaker driver circuit. We've got the two different tuners and they are a little bit fantastic made as well. Look at the inductors here. What is that? Beautiful, huh? And since this is the main tuner with all the different bands, remember? See here we got three different bands and the band switch only one band in the other tuner and then this is of course the band switch and I want to show you something really cool so of course we got the trimmers here to adjust for the different bands but look at those switches up here and that is of course to to trim the different bands so we got some switches in here affecting all the different tuning elements quite nicely done it's really really tough this uh, switch and that is the attenuator this one is of course the different attenuation levels i want to show you that attenuator down there that is something also a little bit out of the ordinary i tried to clean a little bit but it, this is dried lubrication and some other stuff it's it was really blue and green and super duper bad you can still see there is some uh, some left here it's not super nice the attenuator is actually quite nicely made so it's two times let me show you here so we've got 0 20 20 and 40 db attenuation and it's because i think it goes somehow through these so in here we've got the resistors some sort of a through attenuator like that in a carousel switch like that I did not expect to see something this high end in a unit like this. And <laughs> a little transistor hidden up there. I also find another little transistor hidden here. 
inside the tuner. We've probably got a few more transistors in this tuner and inside this tuner as well. And that's the back side of the main circuit board. Oh, there's another funky thing here I want to show you. See, we got three wires from the battery compartment here. And that is something really weird. And see, I added a little bit of text here to so see it is a little bit easier to figure out. So negative, and then we got eight cells. And then the negative, we got a cell here, and then it connects that way. Remember, it goes like this, right? So from minus, we go this way, and then another cell here, another cell here, and then this way, this way, and then, see, that way, and that way. So that will be the end of the eight cells. So that will be 12 volts, right? And then we have from the positive, we have one cell, two cells to that point. And from that point, we have the green wire. So that means three volts from, from positive, so it's running on nine plus three, that's 12. That's what it's running on. That is a little bit uh, funny. Why isn't it symmetric in the center? I mean, really weird. I've been looking a little bit on the schematic to see if I could figure out why, but it's not really easy to figure out. Also, the schematic is not in a super good quality. I will, of course, try and zoom in here on the battery entry area of the schematics. I don't know if you can make any sense of this. Then it goes down to a transistor like that. And what have we got here? I don't know exactly. Well, well, I think we should try and power it up and see if there is any life left in this machine. Oh, you're going to like this. I gave it 3 volt and 9 volt, exactly like I explained when I was showing you the battery compartment. And this is the power consumption. I think this is because I didn't crank up volume. If I crank up the volume a little bit, it gives us a little bit more. And also, I think it uses a little bit different power in the different um, frequency ranges. I got this. I haven't yet figured out what this is doing. It looks like it's turning it off somehow, right? So I'm in FM and this is the 110 to 230 megahertz band. And I have tried to adjust it to 145 megahertz. So let's check this out. If I crank it up like this, and then let's take a little handy. Can you hear? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Doot, doot, doot. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not super good or anything like that, but it seems to be working. So let's try the FM band. And uh, we're of course uh, dialing around there. So that should be 90. See? Why are they broadcasting crap like that? Somebody's talking here and stuff. All right, so it's working. <laughs> How funny! So, yeah, this oldie oldie really works, and of course, you can see the signal level here and if i remove the antenna of course it goes to zero i am a little bit impressed that it actually works i did of course clean it a little bit clean the contact a little bit so that was more or less all i wanted to show you in this little video see you around bye bye